أبدأ بالحمد مصليا على محمد خير نبي نرسلا وذي من أقسام الحديث عدة وكل واحد أتى وحدة أولها الصحيح وهو ما اتصل إسناده ولم يشد أو يعلم فحياكم الله في هذه الأمسية المباركة إن شاء الله وحديثنا في هذه الليلة سيكون مختصرا حول بعض الاحكام المتعلقه بالصيام. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the one who bestows mercy. Indeed, our praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. We welcome everybody to this blessed evening by the permission of Allah, in which we will speak about some of the rulings of fasting. سنمر ان شاء الله على بعض الاحكام المتعلقه بالصيام على وجه مختصر. ويفتح الباب بعد ذلك للأسئلة إن شاء الله. and we will briefly discuss some of the rulings of fasting. and then after this we will allow an opportunity for people to ask questions. أما الصيام فيعرف العلماء بأنه الإمساك عن المفطرات من طلوع الفجر إلى غروب الشمس. the definition of صوم أو صيام is for a person to abstain from المفطرات. i.e. those matters which break the fast from the break of dawn to sunset and the main objective behind fasting is to worship Allah through fasting and Allah subhana said O people of Iman Fasting has been legislated, prescribed, meaning obligated upon you. Just as it was obligated upon those who came before you, so you may attain a taqwa. And this clarifies to us the objective of fasting, and that is to attain a taqwa. قال العلماء فإذا امتنع الإنسان عما هو مباح له من الطعام والشراب والنكاح فامتناعه عما حرم الله عز وجل عليه من باب أولى. And the ulama mention that if you are staying away from eating and drinking and intimate relations and these are matters which Allah subhanahu has made halal for you and permitted for you to do then staying away from those matters which Allah has made haram upon you are more worthy and more deserving of staying away from ولذلك قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام من لم يدع قول الزوري أي الكلام المحرم والعمل به لم يكن لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه and this is why the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever does not stay away from false statements, meaning speech and statements of sin, and acting upon them, Allah is in no need of this person to stay away from his food and drink. And the Prophet he said, perhaps a fasting person does not benefit anything from his fast except hunger and thirst. And perhaps a person stays awake at night to pray. However, he benefits nothing from him staying awake and praying except that he tires himself out. The first point is the question, how do we know the month of Ramadan has entered? دلت النصوص على أن الشهر يثبت بطريقين. And the proofs show us that the month of Ramadan it can be established by one of two ways. أما الطريق الأول فهو رؤيته رؤية الهلال لقول النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام صوموا لرؤيته وأفطروا لرؤيته. So the first way of us knowing that the month of Ramadan has begun is to cite the new moon. And this is due to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, begin your fasting with its citing, either the citing of the Hilal, the new moon, and end your fasting with its citing. أما الطريق الثاني فهو إتمام شهر شعبان ثلاثين إذا لم يرى الهلال لقول النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام فإن غم عليكم فأتم عدة شعبان ثلاثين. And then, the sec and then the second way of us knowing that the month of Ramadan has begun is by the completion of Sha'ban of 30 days. Because the Prophet said, 
if you are prevented or obscured from viewing or seeing the new moon, then complete the month of Sha'ban 30 days. وقد أجمع العلماء على أن ثبوت الشهر لا يدخل بالحساب. And the ulama they completely agree. The scholars completely agree. That the new month or the month of Ramadan is not established or decided by calculations, astronomical calculations. فإذا جاء ثقة رأى الهلال في الليلة التاسع والعشرين مر من شعبان وهو ثقة عدل قبلت شهادته ولا عبرة بكلام الفلكيين. And so, if a trustworthy person, ثقة المسلم, if if a trustworthy Muslim comes. And he bears witness that he has seen the new moon on the 29th night of Sha'ban. Then we accept his witness statement and we pay no attention to what the astronomers are saying. هذا فيما يتعلق بثبوت الشهر. أما أحد الناس فإنهم يصومون إذا صام المسلمون كل حسب بلده. And this is with regards to knowing when the month of Ramadan has started. As for us as individuals, then each one of the, the individual, he begins his fasting when the Muslims fast. And the Muslims of that locality. And the Prophet وسلم, he said fasting begins when the people begin fasting. And fasting ends when the people end their fasting. And so if we were living in a country in which Ramadan is cult in which Ramadan is established according to astronomical calculations then we say to the people that fast according to when the people in that country are fasting and the sin remains upon them أما المسألة الثانية فهي أن صيام الفرض لا يصح إلا أن يبيت الإنسان النية قبل طلوع الفجر أنه سيصوم And then the next issue is with regards to the obligatory fasting. An obligatory fasting or an obligatory fast, it is only valid if a person makes the niyyah or the intention that he is going to fast before the break of dawn. لما روي عن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام وهو ثابت عن أحد أمهات المؤمنين من لم يبيت الصيام من الليل فلا صيام له هذا في الفرض. And this is due to the hadith which has been authentically narrated from one of the mothers of the believers that she said that the Prophet وسلم, said whoever does not make an intention the night before the fasting there is no fasting for that person and this hadith relates to the obligatory fast the fast which is fard and the niyyah or the intention is made in the heart and it is not correct for a person to verbalize the intention upon the tongue. So if a person woke up with the intention that he is going to be fasting, then that is, then that is a valid niyyah. And then we come to the next issue and that is that who is allowed to miss a fast or break a fast during the month of Ramadan. And there are two groups of people who are allowed to break or miss their fast in Ramadan. So the first group of people are those who break or miss a fast in Ramadan and they have to make qada, meaning they have to make up those missed days of fasting at a later stage. And then the second group of people are those people who break or miss a fast in the month of Ramadan 
and they do not need to make up the fast rather they feed a poor person for each day they have missed فَأَمَّا مَنْ يُرَخَّصُ لَهُمْ فِي الْفِطْرِ فِي رَمَضَانِ وَعَلَيْهِمُ الْقَضَى فَالْمَرْضَى وَالْمُسَافِرُونَ so the first group of people who are permitted to miss or break the fast but they only make qada, they only make up the fast at a later stage there are two two people those who are ill and those who are traveling and allah azza wa jal he said as for those amongst you who is ill or on a journey then days at a later stage meaning make up those fast at a later stage وكذلك الحائض لا يصح صومها ويجب عليها القضاء كما قالت عائشة رضي الله عنها and also a woman who is going through her menses her monthly bleeding she is not obligated to fast however she has to make قضاه of the days which she missed as أم المؤمنين عائشة رضي الله عنها mentioned أما الذين ليس عليهم إلا الإطعام ولا صيام عليهم and as for those people who are permitted to miss the fasting in Ramadan and they do not have to make qadha, however they have to feed a poor person for every day they miss, they are. They are old men or women who are unable or too weak to fast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said And those people I who are of, of old age Then they feed the poor people And Allah subhanahu wa and similar to the person who is old in age and too weak and unable to fast is an ill person. However, an ill person who has a chronic or long-term illness. And this illness remains with that person and in most cases he does not recover. And also those people from those people who are permitted or allowed to break or not fast is the woman who is either breastfeeding her child or a woman who is carrying a baby regardless of whether she fears a weakness upon her own self or she fears for her child who she is breastfeeding or she fears for the baby in, the, in her womb and this woman, she has two situations, two states. So the first state is a woman that because she was pregnant, she was carrying a baby, she did not fast. And then for two years after that, she has to breastfeed her child. And then maybe after that she becomes pregnant again. And now she has a number of years upon her which she has to make qadha. She has a number of months or years. So this type of woman who has many years of fasting to now make up because of continuous excuses from the Sharia, the correct view is that she only has to feed poor people for every day she has missed. And this is the verdict of Ibn Abbas and Ibn Umar radiallahu anhum. As for a woman who was pregnant and she gave birth, but then after her pregnancy, she was not breastfeeding her children, neither did she become pregnant again. Then that which is better and safer for her is to mainly make qadha, like a pauper, like an ill person. And then the fourth matter or the fourth, fourth issue is those matters which break or invalidate a person's fast. 
And there are two types of matters which invalidate a person's fast. شَيْءٌ يَدْخُلْ وَشَيْءٌ يَخْرُجْ Either something which enters the body or something which is discharged from the body. الَّذِي يَدْخُلْ يُقَوِّ الْبَدَنْ وَالَّذِي يَخْرُجْ يُضْعِفُ الْبَدَنْ So that which enters the body, it strengthens and nourishes the body. And that which is discharged from the body, it weakens the body. أَمَّا مَا يَدْخُلْ فَهُوَ الطَّعَامُ وَالشَّرَابُ as for those matters which enter the body, then it is food and drink. And Allah Subhanahu said, "Eat and drink until the thread of dawn, the white thread, i.e., the thread of dawn, is clear from the black thread, i.e., night." والمراد بالأكل والشرب هو ما يتغذى به البدن. And the intended meaning behind, in, behind eat and drink is anything which nourishes, provides nourishment to the body. Regardless of whether a person eats through his mouth or it is uh, taken in through his nose. Or it is any type of liquid which enters his body through veins. أما ما يدخل الجسد من غير الفم والأنف وليس مراد به التغذية ولكن مراد به العلاج. As for those matters which enter the body not through the mouth nor the nose and they provide no nourishment to the body, they are only intended as some form of medicine or cure. مثل الإبر العلاجية. فهذه لا تفطر لأنها ليست أكلا ولا شربا ولا في معنى الأكل والشرب. Like medicine, which is not taken through the mouth or the nose, this does not break a person's fast. Why? Because it provides no nourishment to the body. It is only intended as a cure or medicine for something, and therefore this does not invalidate the fast. أما النوع الثاني فهو ما يخرج من البدن. And then the second type of mufattirat are those matters which are discharged from the body. And these are three types. The first matter is a discharge of semen, whether it is due to intercourse or other than it. And this is because the Prophet ﷺ said regarding the fasting person that he must stay away from food and drink and his shahwa. And the intended meaning of shahwa here is uh, a discharge of semen. And then the second matter which enters into this is when a person vomits. And this is when he yatamad, when he induces vomit upon himself. Yani, it's something which is voluntary. Qala ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, man dhara'ahu al-qay fala qada'i alayh, wa man istaqa'a fal yaqdi. And this is because ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma said, whoever is overcome by vomit, then this person does not need to make up the fast. Meaning he continues fasting. But the one who self-induces vomit, then this person has to make qada' later on. أما الشيء الثالث فهو إخراج الدم. and then the third matter which enters into this is a discharge of blood. كالحجامة وكالتبرع بالدم. such as cupping or uh, blood donation. قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أفطر الحاجم والمحجوم. and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the one who performs cupping and the one upon whom cupping is performed, both of them, their fast is broken. And this is when a person is voluntarily discharging the blood or giving the blood. As for a person who suffers from bleeding, such as a person who was cut or was in an accident, then his fast is not broken. الأمر الخامس أن جميع المفطرات لا تفطر إلا إذا تعمدها الإنسان. And then the fifth point is that all of these مفطرات which have been mentioned, those things which invalidate a person's fast, 
they only invalidate a person's fast when they are done intentionally. قال النبي عليه السلام من نسي فأكل وشرب وهو صائم فليتم صومه فإنما أطعمه الله وسقاه. And this is because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever forgot and he ate and drank whilst he was fasting, let him complete his fast because it is as if Allah has fed him or given him to drink. وقال في حديث أعم من ذلك قال من أفطر ناسيا فلا قضاء عليه ولا كفارة. And in fact, in another hadith which is even more general, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever broke his fast unintentionally or forgetfully, there is no qada upon him and neither is there any kafara, any expiation upon him. أَمَّا الْمَسَلَةُ السَّادِسَةِ أَوْ السَّادِسَةِ فَهِيَ مُسْتَحَبَّاتُ الصِّيَامِ And then the sixth point is, those matters which are recommended and encouraged whilst you are fasting. أما مستحبات الصيام فكما ذكرنا هو أن يلتزم الإنسان التقوى وأن يبتعد عما هو محرم من كلام أو فعل بل هذا واجب ليس مستحبا كما ذكرنا نعم. So from those matters which are encouraged in fact they are wajib is as we have mentioned that a person must maintain a taqwa piety and righteousness and that a person stays away from every statement and action which is forbidden. أما المستحبات فأولها الاستعجال في الفطر تعجيل الفطر So from those matters which are encouraged for us to do whilst we are fasting is firstly to hasten and be quick to break our fast within its time وتأخير السحور and also to delay the suhoor within its time قال عليه الصلاة والسلام لا يزال الناس بخير ما عجلوا الفطر وأخروا السحور and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the people will remain upon goodness as long as they hasten to break their fast within its time and they delay the suhoor within its time. And the meaning of breaking the fast or hastening to the break the fast does not mean that a person has to consume a complete meal. In fact, even if a person immediately after the Adhan he took a gulp of water, he has broken his fast. Even if he delayed the meal until late at night. وكذلك لو أكل تمرة لأن بعض الناس يظن أن تعجيل فطور أن يضع الأكل كله. Even if a person ate a single date, this person has fulfilled hastening the iftar because some people think that the meaning of hastening the iftar and doing it quick is that he has to complete his whole meal immediately after the Adhan. أما السحور فيستحب تعجيل الوجبة تأخير وجبة إلى آخر الليل. As for the suhoor, then it is encouraged for a person to delay his suhoor meal until the end of its time. حتى يكون عونا له على الصيام. So a person is able to easily fast because he is nourished before his fast. وأما الأمر الثاني فهو ما يتعلق بالقراءة القرآن والقيام. And then the second area of that which we are going to study is with regards to the recitation of the Qur'an and Al-Qiyam, the night prayer. فلا شك أن شهر رمضان هو شهر القرآن. And no doubt, the month of Ramadan, it is the month of the Qur'an. بل فضل فضل رمضان من فضل القرآن. عادية. فضل رمضان مأخوذ من فضل القرآن. In fact, the virtue of Ramadan is established through the virtue of the Qur'an. قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أو قال جل وعلا شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. Because Allah سبحانه said the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. وكان جبريل عليه السلام ينزل كل عام في رمضان يراجع القرآن مع النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. And the and جبريل عليه السلام he should descend upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم every single Ramadan. And he would revise the whole Quran with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Ramadan. وكان السلف رحم الله يتركون مجالس العلم في رمضان ويعكفون على إكثار من قراءة القرآن. And the Salaf, may Allah have mercy upon them, they used to abandon the gatherings of knowledge or the lessons of knowledge, and they would concentrate in reciting the Quran in abundance. فكان منهم من يختم القرآن في اليوم مرتين ومنهم من يختم في اليوم مرة. So some of them would finish a whole recitation of the Qur'an in a single day and some of them would finish two recitations of the whole Qur'an in a single day. 
And this is something which has been authentically mentioned regarding a large group of scholars and imams from the Salaf. And this does not contradict the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Whoever completes a recitation of the Qur'an in less than three days has not understood it. Because the completion of the Qur'an in the least amount of time is more worthy and more virtuous in those days and seasons of virtue and no doubt the most virtuous season is the month of Ramadan. ما يتعلق بالقيام في رمضان فإنه الشهر الذي يشرع فيه القيام جماعة. And then the second point we mention is with regards to القيام meaning the night prayer and that is that the month of the uh, the month of Ramadan is the month in which praying قيام in congregation is legislated. قال النبي عليه الصلاة من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Whoever stood Ramadan, or whoever stood in the night prayer in Ramadan, out of iman and hoping for the reward which is with Allah, his previous sins have been forgiven." وقد صلى النبي عليه الصلاة بصحابته أياما من ليال رمضان ثم ترك ذلك لألا يفرض عليهم. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He prayed the night prayer with his companions in congregation during the nights of Ramadan. And then he and then he left this alone because he feared that people would think it is an obligation upon them. واستمر الناس يصلون فرادا في رمضان في عهد أبي بكر حتى جاء عهد عمر فجمع الناس على إمام واحد. And then the people they continued praying قيام الليل during Ramadan as individuals during the Caliphate of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه until the Caliphate of Umar رضي الله عنه where he once more returned the people and congregated them behind a single Imam. وأما مقدار القيام أو الركعات فليس له عدد محدود. And as for the number of rakaat a person should pray in قيام الليل during Ramadan, there is no set limit of rakaat. جاء رجل يسأل النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام عن القيام. A man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم questioning him regarding قيام the night prayer. قال صلاة الليل مثنى مثنى فإذا خشيت الصبح فأوتي بركعة مثنى يصلي ثنتين وأربع وست فإن خشيت الصبح فصلي ركعة. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم replied to him that the night prayer is units of two and two. And if you fear that the morning is approaching, then pray a single witr. And the meaning of مثنى مثنى units of two, meaning pray two or four or six or more. And then if you fear that the dawn is about to break, then make a single witr. وأما النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام فأكثر ما ورد عنه هو ثلاث عشرة ركعة. And as for the action of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the majority of the narrations, it is that he used to pray thirteen rakaat in qiyam al-layl. وَأَكْثَرُهَا إِحْدَى عَشْرَةَ رَكَعَةٍ. يعني يصلي إحدى عشرة أكثر من ثلاثة عشرة. In fact, the majority of the narrations mentions the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam praying eleven rakaat in qiyam al-layl. قالت عشرة ذا كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي في رمضان وغيره إحدى عشرة ركعة. And Umm al-Mumni Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would pray within Ramadan and outside of Ramadan 11 raka'at. وَلَمَّا جَمَعَ عُمَرُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ النَّاسَ عَلَى إِمَامٍ وَاحِدٍ أَمَرَ أُبَيَّ بْنَ كَعْبْ وَتَمِيمًا الدَّارِ أَنْ يُصَلُّوا بِالنَّاسِ إِحْدَى عَشْرَةَ رَكَعَةٍ And when Umar radiallahu anhu, when he congregated the people behind a single imam, and, this, and he, uh, he then ordered Ubay ibn Ka'ab and Tamim al-Dari radiyallahu anhuma to lead the people in 11 raka'at. And when it was difficult for the people to stand for 11 raka'at and they were long raka'at, mm -hmm. Then he reduced the then he increased the number of rakaat to twenty three. وفي عهد عمر بن عبد العزيز أمر الإمام أن يصلي خمسا وثلاثين ركعة. And during the caliphate of Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz, he ordered the people to pray thirty five ركعات. وفي عهد الإمام مالك كان الإمام يصلي سبعا وثلاثين ركعة. And during the time of Imam Malik, 
the people would pray 37 rak'ah. واتفق المذاهب كلهم على أن ليس هناك عدد محصور للقيام. And this is why the madhahib, all the fuqaha of the madhahib, all of them agree that there is no set limit to the number of rak'at which are prayed during qiyam al-layl. قال العلماء إن كان الإمام يطيل الركعات فالأولى أن يحافظ على إحدى عشرة ركعة. The ulama have mentioned that if the imam is going to elongate every rak'ah, then it's better for him to pray 11 rak'ahs which are long. And if this long standing in each rak'ah becomes difficult upon the people, then it is better for the imam to reduce the amount of recitation in each rak'ah but increase the number of rak'ahs. الإمام في صلاة التراويح والقيام ألا يقل عن ختمة واحدة في رمضان. And it is encouraged for the Imam that he tries to do a whole completion of the Quran at the least during قيام الليل in رمضان. والأفضل أن يختم في العشرين الأول ثم يختم ختمة أخرى في العشر الأواخر. And what is more encouraged is for the Imam to finish a whole complete recitation of the Quran in the first twenty days of Ramadan. And then in the last 10 days of Ramadan, in, uh, complete another whole recitation of the Quran. And what is better is that if the long standing of the Imam and the long recitation becomes difficult for the people, that they continue praying but they pray sitting down. And this is because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he is better than us, he would sometimes pray Qiyam al-Layl at great length sitting down. And as for the last matter, that is with regards to I'tikaf. And I'tikaf is legislated in the Masajid. والاعتكاف المراد منه أن يلازم الإنسان المسجد وينقطع عن الشواغل ليتفرغ لإدراك ليلة القدر. And the intended meaning behind اعتكاف is for a person to devote himself to the masjid and cut off from his worldly occupations and try to coincide with the night of the Laylatul Qadr. And this is why it is recommended for a person who is in i'tikaf to recite the Quran in abundance and make dhikr in abundance and supplicate to Allah in abundance. ويقطع الشواغل التي تشغله من الكلام عن السياسة والدنيا والأهل وغير ذلك. And as for discussions and conversations which are worldly, then he should he should cut off from them, like speaking about politics and work and family and other matters of the dunya. والذي يبطل الاعتكاف أمران. As for those matters which invalidate the i'tikaf, there are two matters which invalidate it. الأمر الأول الخروج بدون حاجة. The first matter which invalidates the i'tikaf is for a person to leave the masjid without any need or necessity. And then the second matter which invalidates a person's i'tikaf is for a person to embrace his, his wife, whether it is through kissing, for example, or the intimate relations. And Allah Subhanahu wa said, and do not approach your wives whilst you are making i'tikaf in the masajid. And as for a person leaving his place of i'tikaf in the masjid and going outside due to a need, like for example in order to bring food or to bring some clothing and there is nobody who can bring food or clothing for him this does not invalidate the i'tikaf so this is a summary of some of the rulings of uh, fasting and qiyam and i'tikaf and now we leave an opportunity for you to ask any questions which you have regarding uh, these matters Just one second, brother. Uh, the sisters, they can text the questions or just ask about you because Can they text? No. 
Yeah. Uh, the sisters, they can text their questions through to the masjid number, inshallah. Sorry. Are you asking that is there a difference between Qiyam and Taraweeh? Yeah. Are these two different things? Yes. No. no, his question not No, only whom Yaksum be Qiyam, Qiyam al Layl. No, repeat your question. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, that's English, mashallah. Oh, mashallah. Yeah. So, some uh, people say to pray uh, in, uh, behind the Imam the whole night in Taraweeh, you get a reward for the whole night. Yeah. But some people say, in addition, you can pray Qiyam, you will get more rewards. So, I'm not going to. لا هو نفس السؤال لا هو يقول أن الإمام نعم إذا صل الحديث أنك إن صلى الإمام يكون يقول قيام ليلة فقط لا تصلي إذا المسجد قد يصلي التراويح يصلي القيام يقول خاص اكتفي بالتراويح كتب القيام لا تصلي القيام وآخرون يقول لا صلي التراويح وصل القيام القيام نعم هنا I understand English better than him the the question is that some people they say Praying Taraweeh alone, this is sufficient for the whole night prayer due to the hadith. Other people say that in say they say in addition to praying Taraweeh, you should pray Qiyam al-Layl for extra reward. So is there any difference between this? The answer is what is the virtue or the reward of Surah Al-Ikhlas? Surah Al-Ikhlas through the Quran. The Prophet said that Surah Al-Ikhlas it is it equates to a third of the Quran. So if a person recites Surah Al-Ikhlas three times, it's as if that person has recited the Quran. And so if a person said to you, don't recite the Quran, merely recite Surah Al-Ikhlas three times and you've completed the whole Quran. Would you agree to this? لا والعلماء يفرقون بين الفضل يعني من قرأ الإخلاص له الأجر ثلث القرآن لكن ليس كمن قرأ ثلث القرآن. If a person recites سورة الإخلاص once, he has this reward, but it is not equal to a person who recites the whole Quran. ثلث القرآن. نعم. أثر ثلث القرآن. فالذي يصلي التراويح مع الإمام حتى ينصرف كتب له قيام ليلة. So a person who prays the Taraweeh with the Imam, it is written for him as if he has prayed the whole night. But this is not equal to a person who prays Taraweeh, then in addition to this he prays another Qiyam. So in each instance in which the Salah of a person is longer and greater, he has more reward uh, than the other. فلو صار الإنسان خلف الإمام وانتهى الإمام له أن يكمل في بي ليل في بيته ما يشاء. So if a person prayed tarawih with the imam and completed with the imam, he can continue praying at home as much as he wishes. Ask about the witter. That's my question. هو يسأل عن الوتر ما رأي فعل؟ الذي صلى مع الإمام يؤخر الوتر. إذا أوتر مع الإمام الأفضل أن يوتر مع الإمام. نعم. حتى يكتب له قيام ليلة ثم يصلي ركعتان ركعتان بلا وتر. So if a person prays with the imam, he should pray the witr with the imam. So the whole night is written for him. And then if he wants to increase after this, he can carry on praying two ركعات and two ركعات but without a second وتر. وقال بعض العلماء يصلي مع الإمام الوتر فإذا سلم الإمام قام وجعلها شافعا. And some of the ulama mention. That he should pray the odd prayer with the Imam, but then when the Imam makes a taslim, he stands up and prays one more rak'ah to make it an even number. ثم بعد ذلك يوتر في آخر الليل. And then he continues praying, and then he makes his witr at the end of the night. The brother he asks a question with regards to the intention of Ramadan. Does it have to be every single day before the fast, or is one intention sufficient for the whole month? So if a person makes an intention that he's going to fast the whole of Ramadan, this is sufficient for the whole month. Uh, 
the question that the, the Sheikh asks is, uh, after thanking the Sheikh for this very important lecture, is that nowadays we have very precise and exact calculations which are based upon astronomy. And we have technology which is very advanced. So why is this prohibited when it comes to calculating Ramadan? Firstly, we have to understand that the new moon is not that which is established in the skies. Rather, the point behind the new moon is your sighting of the new moon. And so, the beginning of the month of Ramadan or the ending of the month of Ramadan it is not established upon whether the new moon exists or does not exist. Rather, the month begins when people see the new moon. And this is from the mercy of Allah upon this ummah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when mentioning this mercy, he said that we are a nation or an ummah who does not read nor write, meaning we do not establish the month through calculations. And this is in order to prove the virtue of this ummah. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he connected the beginning of the month to your sight. And a person, whether he is ignorant or whether he is knowledgeable, all of them are able to clearly see the new moon. Male and female. Whether a person is out in the desert or here in the city, all of them can see the moon. Wherever a person may be, even if a person was in the Himalayan mountains, as long as he can see the moon, then the month is established. And this is how the month is established. Let me give you an example. The Prophet said, if your sighting of the new moon is obstructed, then complete 30 days of Sha'ban. So if your view is obscured because of the presence of clouds, there's a, a large possibility that the new moon is present. However, you cannot see it because of the clouds, but the moon is present. Did the Prophet say, start making calculations? Or did he say, complete the 30 days of Sha'ban, regardless of whether it is present or not? And again, this is from the mercy of Allah upon this nation. And so, even if the people were wrong, even if the people were wrong because they did not see the moon, there's no problem in this because the moon is established either by us viewing the new moon or by the 30 days of Sha'ban. The ulama have agreed that if the Muslims made a mistake and instead of standing on, on the plains of Arafah on the ninth day, they made a mistake and they stood on the eighth day or the tenth day, the standing of Arafah is still valid. أساساً كل مشكلة في كل سنة في كل سنة هي بسبب الحساب الفلكي وحساب ذلك لو هاجرنا ورجعنا للسنة لما حصل خلاف. And nowadays people say that through relying on us uh, calculations and astronomy we can unite the ummah. The reality is that the differing of the ummah is due to these calculations. Every year the problem is that there are differences in calculations. So if we left this alone and we actually relied upon the sunnah none of these problems would occur. Uh, the question is that if the new moon is sighted in a different country 
Do we have to wait for our country or our locality also to sight the new moon? إذا كنت في دولة فصم معهم. If you are in a country, you fast when that country is fasting. كنت في المغرب والجزائر رأوا الهلال لكن المغرب لم يصوموا لا تصوم معك. So if you are in Morocco and in Algeria they are fasting, but the Muslims of Morocco are not fasting, then you do not fast because you are in Morocco. أما إذا كنت في بلد الناس متفرقون وليس لهم إيش رأس هذا مثل ما هذا مسجد يصوم وهذا لا يصوم وليس لهم هيئة تجمعهم فحين إذن يجوز أن يصوموا على أول رؤية ترى في بلاد المسلمين. However, if you are in a country in which the Muslims are disunited regarding the month of Ramadan, so you're in a city or an area, this masjid is fasting today, that masjid is not fasting today. Why? Because there is no central organization or, or, or council which is uniting the Muslims, then it is permitted for us to fast according to uh, the country which first sees the moon. The brother he said, he said, Sheikh, you said that one intention at the beginning of the month it is valid for the whole month. But if in the middle of the month a person stops fasting because of an illness, is that initial intention sufficient or does a person have to repeat the intention again? Due to that period of not fasting. النية باقية لأن الفطر هنا لعذر. الذي يقطع النية هو أن لا ينوي الصيام لغير عذر. يعني خاص نوى قطع الصيام بلا عذر. أما إذا كان لعذر فهو لم يقطع نيته. إنما أفضل ليجل عذر. The initial niya it is valid. Why? Because that person only broke his fast for a valid excuse in the Sharia, and therefore his intention is valid. When does the intention cease? It's when a person decides or intends to stop fasting for no Islamically valid reason. I'd like to ask, when it comes to breaking your fast, you have to pay the poor with food. Is there a metric how much you have to give them? Is it you have to feed a family, you have to feed one person, or is it whatever you decide, whatever you can afford? No. Can it be money or is it only food? So the brother asks, with regards to feeding a poor person for each day you have missed of fasting, is there some specific amount that you have to fast, uh, that you have to feed, and can you give money or does food have to be given? No. So the amount that you have to feed a poor person for the each day you have missed is one meal, whatever is sufficient as a single meal. ولا يجوز أن يعطى مالا إلا أن يشتري الفقير به طعاما. And you're not permitted to give money to the person unless you give money to the poor person in order for him to go buy the food. فممكن إنسان يعمل وليمة ويدعو ثلاثين مسكين هذا طعام ثلاثين مسكين. So if a person missed, for example, thirty days of fasting, then you can. Invite you can have a dinner, for example, and you invite thirty poor people, and therefore each one has a meal, and then now is the whole month which has been covered. If a person knows that he will not be fasting the month of Ramadan due to a long-term chronic illness. Is he allowed to give this uh, kafar or this fidya before Ramadan enters? أما قبل رمضان فلا تصح الفدية. As for before Ramadan, then feeding the poor people is not correct. وإنما يجوز له الفدية بعد دخول الشهر. Rather, a person is permitted to give this fidya after the month of Ramadan has entered. إن شاء أن يدفع ثلاثين مسكين من أول الشهر أو إن شاء أن يطعم كل يوم. Either. He can feed 30 poor people in the beginning of Ramadan or he can feed a poor person every day of Ramadan. And even if a person delayed the feeding of the poor people until after Ramadan, this is still valid. But it is better and more virtuous for this to be done within Ramadan. 
uh, is it legislated for women to make i'tikaf? نعم امهات المؤمنين كنا اعتكفنا مع النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام اذا وجد المراه مكان تعتكف مصلى فلا باس the question is is it legislated for women to make i'tikaf yes because the mothers of the believers رضي الله عنهن they used to make i'tikaf with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so as long as there is a dedicated space in the musalla يعني in the masjid for the women to make i'tikaf then they make i'tikaf The, the question is that with regards to i'tikaf, there is a hadith, there should be no i'tikaf except in the three holy mosques. So this is not a hadith, rather this is a view or a statement of some of the companions. And I think it is the statement of Ali radiallahu anhu. But the other companions, they opposed him and they permitted i'tikaf in every masjid. And some of the ulama mentioned that the meaning of his statement is, is if a person took a vow to only make i'tikaf in one of those three masajid, he has to make i'tikaf in one of those three masajid based upon his vow, his oath. <coughs> Uh, so, so, uh, are there are there sins for which a person is not rewarded for his fasting, or the f the reward of fasting fasting it is diminished because of his sins? Uh, sins do not invalidate a person's fast completely, except adultery. Because of course, adultery it comes under. Uh, Intimate relations. Um, uh, when you have valid reasons not to fast, like maybe you are traveling or you are sick, can you, both of you, you and your wife, can you have intimacy during the daytime? No. So, a person who is permitted not to fast, like a person who is traveling or a person uh, who is ill, for those reasons, when he is not fasting, then can he have intimate relations with his wife? Naam, if he is not fasting, he is not fasting. كالمسافرين فهذا لا بأس أن يجامع امرأته. So if both the man and the woman both of them are not fasting due to an Islamically valid reason like for example being a traveler then it is permitted for them this action. لكن ليس لهم أن يسافروا لأجل الجماع. بس هم فهموا كلهم ما شاء الله. لا صحيح هذا مهم لأن بعض الناس يسافر لأجل ال. But but what is not permitted. Is for a person to make a journey in order to have intercourse. إلا إذا تزوج زوجة جديدة. لكن على الرسم كده just kidding. تفضل. In order for persons in a situation where they can't do qada or fast, and the financial situation doesn't allow them to feed poor people or to pay. Um, yeah. uh, the brother he asked an important question and that is if a person is not able to make up the fastings due to due to ill health for example neither does he have the financial means to feed a poor person what does he do so this person there is nothing upon that person there's no burden upon that person. But when or if he does become financially able, then he can feed a poor person. No. <coughs> you know with like the breaking of the fast, say for example you've got a calendar. A calendar. The calendar in the masjid. And there, and say for example if Salat al Maghrib is at 4.30, on the calendar it says 4.34, so four minutes after, which one do you break, which one, um, like, which one do you use the calendar or do you break it when you hear the other on the TV or the masjid? No. Or do you break it when you see the sunset with your own eyes? No. So, so the question is, when it comes to suhoor or iftar, 
Do you rely on calendars? Or do you rely on the muaddin in your masjid? Or do you rely on you yourself seeing the break of dawn or sunset? إذا كانت هذا التقويم يتعمدون تأخير المغرب عن وقتها المعتاد لا 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 يتبعهم بل يفطر على على الوقت الحقيقي. If these calendars are delaying iftar on purpose, and this is something which is purpose or intentional, then you don't follow those calendars. You have to follow the actual time. كذلك اليوم يوضع في الفجر فجر وقبل عشر دقائق يسمى الإمساك هذا بدعة. بل له أن يأكل إلى طلوع الفجر. And similarly today, there is a bid'ah or an innovation in which they have the time of fajr, and then perhaps ten minutes before fajr they say this is the time that you cannot eat after, and this is an innovation. Rather, a person is permitted to eat up until the time of fajr. قال جل وعلا فكل وشربوا حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر أي حتى يطلع الفجر. Because the because Allah سبحانه said and eat and drink until. You can distinguish between the white thread and the black thread of dawn, meaning until the dawn is broken. لو أفطر الإنسان ظن أن أن المغرب قد أذن. سمع صوت أذان في التلفاز وتبين أن الأذان هذا في دولة أخرى وما كان آخر. وأفطر ناسيا. ليس عليه شيء. يمسك وينتظر حتى يأتي الأفطار الحقيقي. If a person he broke his fast unintentionally, meaning he thought that the time of iftar has come. Perhaps he listened to an adhan and then he realized that this is the, the adhan on TV from a different country and therefore he broke his fast there is nothing upon the person. He continues with his fast until the actual time of Maghrib comes. كذلك لو أكل ظن منه أن الفجر لم يؤذن إما أنه نظر في الساعة فلم ينتبه أو ما شابه ذلك ثم تبين بأن الفجر قد أذن أيضا فلا شيء عليه. Similarly if a person continued eating and he did not realize that the time of Fajr has come. For example, he looked at his watch and he thought that the time of Fajr has not come, but the time had entered. There is nothing upon him. He stops eating immediately and then he continues his fast. The, the time of the masjid, let's say Maghrib here, is three minutes later than the other masjid. Which one does he take? And he's living, let's say, in between. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the question is that sometimes even the masajid they differ within a few minutes of iftar. So what does a person do? إذا كان مسجد المتأخر يتعمد التأخير فلا يتبعه. أما إذا كان اختلاف هم مختلفون في التقويم ليس متعمدا فالأولى أن يفطر على المسجد المتأخر. المتأخر. If a masjid it intentionally delays the iftar to a time which is wrong, then you don't follow that masjid. You follow the actual time. However, if there is a valid difference of opinion amongst those two masjids which are closer to each other, then go with the masjid which is later. I was going to ask, um, a few years ago, Ram uh, Ramadan came during a period where there was school exams and some of the parents, they followed an opinion where the children didn't have to fast. What would you... Uh, the question is, is it allowed for students to not fast because of exams? It is not permitted for students to abandon fasting due to exams. And fasting does not prevent revising. In fact, the companions, they fought jihad, battles and wars whilst they were fasting. And many of them would continue days of fasting without eating or drinking. In fact, now many studies are saying that it's actually better for you and gives you clarity in the mind. The question is, does the wife have to seek permission from her husband to perform i'tikaf? Yes, because a woman is not permitted to leave the house without the permission of her husband. So the question is that is i'tikaf only done in a masjid or can it be done in a musalla, like a prayer area? 
some places they, we have small small messages. Yeah. They do the five daily prayers, but they have okay. bigger message where they congregate for Jumu'ah. For okay. Example. Okay. So, can a person perform itikaf in a masjid in which there is no Jumu'ah, only the five prayers? La ba sabihi, lakin ida jat al Jumu'ah wajab alayhi yakhud yusalli al Jumu'ah wa yarji ala tu. So a person can perform itikaf in that masjid in which the Jum'ah does not exist, but it is a masjid with the five daily prayers. But when the time for Jum'ah comes, he has to go to the masjid in which there is Jum'ah. Then he returns immediately to where his itikaf was. Does anybody that is itikaf? No, no, no. I have a question here. It says, what should we do for one of your deceased parents when you know they might have missed some days of fasting due to illness? Uh, the question is that if you have deceased parents who have upon them qada because they missed fasting due to an illness, what do we do? If you have father or a mother or a relative who passed away and they had fasts which they had missed and the qada was meant to be done but they passed away. You feed a poor person for each day they fast but you do not keep the fast on their behalf. Because feeding a poor person, this is the replacement for a person who is not able to fast. And therefore when that person passed away, they were no longer able to fast, then you feed a poor person. As for the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whoever passed away and has had days of fasting upon them, then his wali, yani his close relative should fast on his behalf. Uh, this relates to when a person took a vow or an oath upon themselves to fast a number of days and then they passed away before being able to fulfill that vow. Then the relative can fulfill the vow on their behalf and fast on their behalf. And this is how the Sahaba did. No. Uh, how do we understand the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that if a person is eating and the time for suhoor comes he can continue eating? المراد بهذا هو أن يكون الإنسان قد رفع اللقمة إلى فيه أو الإناء إلى فيه وأذن مؤذن حين إذن يكمل. The intended meaning behind this hadith is that if a person has lifted a morsel of food. Or oh, he has lifted the cup to his mouth and then the adhan is given, then he should complete that which he has in his hands. Or if a person had a morsel of food in his mouth and he was eating, he completes that, that morsel. But as for taking another mouth for another morsel of food, this is not allowed. The Sheikh said you cannot do it before. No, the yeah. He said when, when Ramadan enters. Feed Yom al Awwal. Yeah. The question is how can you feed 30 poor people on the first day of Ramadan? Because the ulama mentioned that it is permitted for a person to bring forward something once the cause or the reason is established. So an example of this is if a person wants to donate his zakah before the prescribed time. So if a person does not have the nisab, meaning the minimum amount of wealth after which zakah is given, 
then he cannot give a zakah, he cannot hasten his zakah. Why? He does not have the nisab. لكن لو ملك النصاب ولم يتحقق الشرط بحوران الحول جاز أن يعجل الزكاة. But if a person possesses the nisab, i.e. the minimum amount after which the zakah is an obligation, he is allowed to bring forward his zakah even if a whole year has not passed. Why? Because he possesses the nisab. ولذلك قال ويدل على هذا أن العباس رضي الله عنهما عجل زكاة سنتين. And the evidence of this is that Al Abbas, radiallahu uh, an, he gave his zakah two years in advance. وهذا يدل وهذا ومن هنا أخذ العلماء قاعدة بأن تعجيل الشيء قبل وجود سبب لا يصح وأما تعجيله بعد وجود سبب فيصح. And so from this, the ulama they established this principle that you can bring forward something after the reason or the condition is fulfilled. However, doing something in advance of the condition being fulfilled is not allowed. And this is also the action of the, some of the companions. May Allah be pleased with them. Similar question in regards to Zakat, zakat al Fitr. Uh, is a person here in this country cannot uh, give the Zakat in grains, you know, in, in food, and is allowed to send it abroad and, and uh, I mean, give it. Send the money abroad. Yes, yeah, send the money. No. And even there are some, some countries you can't, they, people won't, won't accept food. How do you do that? Uh, so the question is, is it, allow, is it allowed for a person to send money in advance for zakat al-fitr? And sometimes in the country people don't accept food. They only want the money. So what do we do? Zakat al-fitr anha la takun illa ta'aman. Hada al alayhi sunnah. The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that zakat al-fitr can only be given as food. Lenna al-faqir indahu zakat al-mal. Because the poor person, he has already been given money and he also has uh, he has grains and also there is zakat of cattle and there is also zakat of merchandise and stock so this zakat the annual zakat all of these four matters all are wealth and so now zakat al-fitr, the sharia has dedicated to specified food. And this is better and safer. And so zakat al-fitr can only be given one or two days prior to Eid. However, it's allowed for a person to give money in order for the cattle fitter to be bought as food on that day. <coughs> if uh, somebody is traveling and says that he doesn't have to fast, but let's say that person who is traveling also wants to fast, which is preferable? So is it better for a traveler to fast or is, be or is it better for a traveler not to fast? If he does not have a fast, he is a fast, he is a fast, he is a fast. If the person on the journey finds no difficulty in fasting during his, during his journey, he has a choice. He can fast or he can leave the fasting. However, if the journey is difficult upon him, then it is better for him not to fast. Uh, for example, a person who left this country. Left. No, he, he, he lives. Lives. Yeah. If you say, for example, your wife left his other side, then you say, oh, you can pay zakat Okay. What's your question exactly? Are you allowed to give zakat al fitr as money to pay bills? Is that your question? Yeah. So if I say, my family, you know, I'm here. Yeah, your family's there. Other country. So they buy for my side. They buy food. Yeah. For your family? Yeah. No. So if you're living in one country and your family is in a different country, yeah. can you send your zakat al fitr to your family in a different country? Yeah. So uh, zakat or zakat al fitr cannot be given to your relatives such as your wife or your children or your parents. Zakat al fitr is not given to them or zakat.
Tamam. He chooses. Analysis. So, so the question is: Is it allowed for a person to donate blood, or for cupping to perform be performed in Ramadan? قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أفطر الحاجم والمهجوم يدل على أن الحجامة تفطر. The saying of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that the one performing cupping or the one upon whom cupping is performed this shows us that حجامة cupping it invalidates the fast. قال علماء فدل على أن خروج الدم بالحجامة أو بما هو أبلغ من الحجامة كالتبرع اللي هو أكثر فهو مفطر. So from this, the ulama they took the principle that giving blood by way of hijama or donating blood, which is actually greater in amount than hijama, this breaks the fast. أما أما الفحص يأخذ منك شيء في الفحص تحليل فهذا لا بأس به إذا كان شيء نسيرا. As for giving a small amount of blood for blood analysis, then this is no problem as long as it's a small amount. لأنه لا يح لا يصل لحد الحجامة الحجامة. Because that small amount for blood analysis is not like the amount which is given in the hijama. Uh, just follow, follow up on that question. For example, the second line of your rehim, for example, like yeah. hungry. Yeah. And of course, you still got to give sikha to the It is okay to give yeah. to your rehim, right? right. So, the second level. No. So, so the question is. That Sheikh, you said you cannot give a cattle fitr to your parents, your wife, and your children. But those who are after them, like your uncles, aunties, or your cousins, can you give to them? Zakat al fitr la tudfa' lil ibn wal bint wa in nazalu, wala al ab wal um wa in saadu wa zawja. Ma siwa dalik al akh wal ukht wal am wal khal la bas. Zakat al fitr cannot be given to your children or the children of your children, are your grandchildren. And neither can zakat al-fitr be given to your parents or the parents of your parents are your, are your grandparents. Anybody aside the, them, you can give zakat. And also uh, the wife. Uh, besides them, your brother, your sister, your uncles, your aunties, zakat al-fitr can be given but to them. And that is with the condition that they are fuqara, poor. Why does zakat kazalik? Zakat was zakat al-fitr. This applies to both zakat and zakat al-fitr. No. Gave it, let's say, to other people. What's the condition? What's the ruling on that? For example, let's say, your rehim is fuqara. Okay. And you gave it other no. than them. So, so the question is, is it better for you to give your zakat to those relatives who are in need and poor? Or is it better to give it to other Muslims who are also poor and in need? The Prophet ﷺ said, Giving zakat. The Prophet ﷺ said, giving charity to a close relative who is needy of charity, this is giving charity and keeping the ties of kinship. While having intimacy of Jibba. The question is, uh, why is having intimacy, if the Adhana Fajr is given, should you stop or continue? You should stop. He has plenty of time, why he chose that? <laughs> Uh, what's the reason why the hajim, the person who's performing the cupping, why is his fast broken? Uh, this is because in the olden days, hijam was performed by the person he would suck via some type of instrument, the blood. So this was with regards to him, not uh, the modern techniques. So the one upon whom the cupping is performed, the fast is broken. 
the one who utilizes mo modern uh, techniques for cupping the fastest okay how do you advise your wife and your children who refuse to fast by advising them and make me dua <laughs> if she prays don't divorce but if, he, if she doesn't pray you have to advise her if she insist not to pray, you cannot continue with her. Because leaving prayer is kufr. Because the Prophet وسلم, said that between a person's Islam and between a person's kufr disbelief is the salah. Whoever abandons the salah has disbelieved. But just raise your voice, brother. Fitar. Fitar. So, how much is the value of Zakat al Fitr which has to be given in grains? Yani how much is it equal in terms of money? In case you cut the Zakat. Are they يعني لو كان سيخرج صاع من تمر سعره غير عن صاع من دقيق سعره غير عن صاع من أرز سعره غير عن صاع من أخر يختلف قيمة كل شيء الصاع أربع أمداد الصاع 3 لترز any place which is 3 لترز exactly هذا صاع so what has to be given in زكاة الفتر is الصاع which is 3 kilograms or 3 لترز not 3 كيلو Three liters. Three liters. Yeah. Because it's volume. volume. It's not weight, it's volume. So it's three liters. Three liters is more than three kilograms. No. It's more than three kilograms. Kilograms or liters? No. And the milk is more than three kilograms. But we have three liters for the milk. This is for the milk. So it's, it's one sa which is three liters. But of course the amount it costs will differ. So, three liters of dates is different to rice, is different to wheat. <laughs> uh, uh, is there an authentic hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was fasting and yet hijama performed? Fasting hijama, lay sunak hadith. جاء حديث النبي صلى الله عليه في سفر وهو صائم لكن ليس في الحديث أنه أتم صومه. So there is a hadith that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was cupped whilst he was fasting but it does not say that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he completed his fast. So, so is it recommended to give zakah before Ramadan or should we give zakah inside Ramadan because actions are rewarded inside Ramadan greater? The ruling is that zakat al-fitr has to be given once the conditions of zakat are fulfilled and a whole year has passed whenever that day comes. But if a person wanted to specify his day of zakat to be within Ramadan so he can get the virtue of good actions in Ramadan, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, Brother Sheikh tried to answer as many questions. He has a train journey back to London. Last two questions. One or two questions, inshallah. Can you explain? Um, so an advice to those people who are excessive and they exaggerate when it comes to eating during Ramadan such that the ibadat are neglected. So 
So this responsibility returns to the father and the sons because they see their mother cooking and they're sitting there happy that the meals are going to be cooked. So it's their job to say to their mother, this is sufficient one meal or whatever we can break the fast with is sufficient rather concentrate on worship. Um. So uh, the, the question is that if one of the sisters, if she enters into a menses during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, how does she attain the virtue of Laylatul Qadr? لا يفوتها الفضل إلا أنها تدعو الله وتذكر الله عز وجل لا يلزم أن تصلي لا يلزم ليلة قدر الصلاة بل دعاؤها واستغفارها وذكرها هذا من دراك ليلة الفضل in order to attain the virtue of Laylatul Qadr, it does not mean that it is restricted to Salah, to the prayers. She, in her menses, she can also attain the reward and the virtue of Laylatul Qadr through Istighfar and Dua and Dhikr. And she attains the full reward of Laylatul Qadr. <laughs> Barakallah <laughs> 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 <laughs>